Hello everyone, I am MechaRandom42, your favorite YouTube harpy. We got some Doctor Who news here, and holy crap, Doctor Who Season 12 will be more like the Davies and Moffat eras. <sighs> Gee, I wonder, I wonder why. Maybe because people saw this era and they're like, nope, nope, maybe. I mean, I, I was kind of even of the, of the, um, you know, maybe not the Moffat era sort of, sort of person. That's about when I started really, um being it started being less of a show that I couldn't wait to watch to a show I'm like yeah I need to catch up on that and then the Jodie Whittaker stuff if I wasn't doing it for the channel I probably would have dropped it after maybe one or two episodes it wasn't that bad but it really wasn't that good and there was way too many cringe moments <laughs> just way too many you know like oh did you really just make a did you really just make that political did you really just make that male bashing that is my biggest problem with that new Doctor Who and I <sighs> This is either a clickbaity sort of lie just to get people back into the series, or they're actually going to fix something and admit that hey, maybe they maybe they messed up, maybe they messed up because we already know they're bringing back more classic sort of villains coming up, or at least one. And, and oh, I don't know, I don't know. The David Tennant era I loved, you know, Russell T Davies era I really really loved. That's what brought me back into the series, really pretty early, pretty early. The Matt Smith stuff. I mean, I like him as the doctor. I didn't like the stories as much. I really just didn't like the stories as much. They weren't so, they weren't so epic. They weren't so impactful for me. Early signs seem to indicate that the upcoming Doctor Who season 12 will return to a more familiar ground, perhaps even feel more like past eras under showrunners Russell T. Davies and Stephen Moffat. When previous Dr. Peter Capaldi and showrunner Stephen Moffat opted to depart the BBC's iconic science fiction series almost simultaneously, a period of great change was inevitable for Doctor Who. Moffat was replaced by Chris Chibnall, which I... Wow, I said it right. I didn't say chin balls this time. Damn it. Bad me. Bad me. I mean, good me? No, because I still said chin balls. His name is hard for me to say, okay? <laughs> My mouth wants to invert and reverse... I am a little dyslexic too, so yeah. I always reverse it. Who in turn cast Jodie Whittaker as the first actress to helm the TARDIS in the show's 50 year plus history? This alone was enough to change some fans to cope with, but Chibnall opted to make his mark upon Doctor Who with a debut season that stood distinctly apart from the show's past. Yeah, but it was bad. It was bad, and most of the fans didn't like it. How, how, how many of you guys, like, found me from Doctor Who when I was talking about Doctor Who, you know, six months ago, when it was still on? I, I review it, and I'll, I'll watch it again, I, I assume, I hope. <laughs> but yeah, th this stuff. It, it's just not, it wasn't up to par, right? So of course they have to fix it. Of course they have to go in and and figure out how to make more of the old time fans come back and, and we'll stop insulting us. Stop making everything a, a, stop making everything a meme. Just stop making everything a, oh yes, orange man bad, blah, 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 blah. Who cares? Who cares? I don't care. I don't care about the politics. I don't care that, you know, some character has a wife, blah, blah, blah. Maybe stop killing off all the token lesbian character, but, but still, like, I don't care. I don't care at the end of the day. We want good characters. We don't care who they're sleeping with. We don't care what color of skin they are. Give us some aliens in Doctor Who, you know, that that wouldn't be so bad. In addition to the new cast of characters, Chimbal's Doctor Who, I said it again, employs Chibnall. <laughs> employed brand new filming techniques, opted a different visual style, and featured music from... I cannot pronounce the name, Sigun Akinola for the first time. And that was one of the problems. You know, we barely saw the TARDIS. It took maybe, what, three or four episodes to even see it. That was one of the issues. And yeah, it just felt like a different show. It felt like, it felt like going on an adventure with mom, but she's got Cheerios in her hair and is dragging a two-year-old behind, behind her, right? So we have to go to like the family friendly places to appease the two year old because oh no, we can't go into like a space battle and, and kill all the Daleks, right? No, we can't do that <laughs> because, because the two year old wouldn't want it, you know? And that, that's kind of a lot what it felt like. It, it kind of felt more like being on the magic school bus than being in a time machine. In terms of story, Chinball, Chibnall intentionally avoided utilizing 
any established villains, which was a mistake, huge mistake. Instead of introducing a whole new crop, of, instead introducing a whole new crop of alien troublemakers, and quite unlike the showrunners who preceded him, structured his debut season into standalone episodes with very little in the way of overarching plot lines. That was another. That was another thing that was might have been a little bit of a problem. There really wasn't any sort of common thread to look back at and go, "Oh, I gotta rewatch." It's not really worth that much. It's not worth a rewatch. You know, there's no established villains. There's nothing that's going to come back that we're going to care about, right? While some fans appreciate the fresh approach, and it could even be argued that new viewers were drawn in as a result, given the ratings increase, which didn't... Yeah, that that only happened for, like, the one episode, right? Now I gotta gotta click it. I gotta click it. I don't want to click it. The ratings increase. Oh, December 18th. Yeah, they were the highest since 2012 because it was off the air for like, <laughs> oh god, I remember that article, I remember that article. <gasps> oh lord, we're not getting into that one, that's a tangent for another day, holy crap. Others felt alienated by the all new Doctor Who. Yeah, well yeah, because she kept telling us how, how bad we were. And and kept, that was the thing, she, she didn't feel like the authority figure. She felt like if everybody's in a room, she felt like the guest star that was going to get killed off. <laughs> That's really what it felt. She felt like the guest star was getting killed off. That was gonna be tagging along David Tennant, and those facial expressions are very off-putting. So much of her character is so off-putting, right? She she does this this sort of she she does this thing where she's trying to mom everything. It feels like instead of being the scary doctor, and that's one of the theories I've always had with this this new season of Doctor Who is that, and, and my feeling anyway is that it needs to have the doctor as an authority figure and a scary authority figure at times. You know, you, you need to have somebody who's like, ooh, this person could F me up. I think I'll listen to them, you know, instead of la la la, we're gonna go on the swing set now and babysit. And at least that's what it felt like, you know, it was just so much, it almost felt like a rom-com that forgot the comedy and the romance, right? Come this season's conclusion, the storylines were generating more controversy online than the Doctor's gender, which swiftly rendered a non-issue. Yeah, no, it's a widely praised performance. That's a performance? I can do that, and I'm, I've am i got bigger boobs, so. Hire me, I'll be the Doctor. <laughs> like, legit, like, legit. I know, her gender was never an issue. How, swapping for a woman was never an issue. To me, anyway, I, I think a lot of people did because it means tradition, isn't it? Like a, a lot of ways, you don't, you, you, you wouldn't cast an American as the Doctor. You wouldn't cast certain people because it's a British show. It is a very much, it is very much a British show. And for me, somebody who grew up with like the old Doctors, you know, fourth and fifth, and then you know, and then up into even till fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh. That was kind of my my era, right? As a kid growing up. Yeah, I saw him in reruns. PBS, yay, PBS. <laughs> but, but still, like, I, I grew up with that stuff, and then I came back into it with David Tennant. And then I went back and rewatched the the, the Christopher Eccleston stuff because, yeah, it's 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 Doctor Who. This new stuff, I can't I can't really even recommend catching up because it's Doctor Who because it's just so different. And if it gets better, then yeah, I'll say yeah, go 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 right ahead. But. <laughs> Eh, it's, it's, you're not missing much. You're really not missing anything. There's nothing groundbreaking. If you want something just to have on in the background, it's all right. It's all right. It's not gonna. It's not gonna be that bad. There was a couple of really good, like funny characters in in the series that I really enjoyed. I think I liked some of the bad episodes because they had cute things. In them. <laughs> that's just me. But that's me with anything cute. I think that's what gave Captain Marvel a much higher score than it deserved to, because Goose the Cat was cute. But I like cute things. I'm a girl. Whether in response to that criticism or because Chibnall believes Chibnall, <laughs> his second season can afford to be less boldly unique, there is a feeling that Doctor Who season 12 will revert to a more familiar format and closely resemble the Moffat and D- uh, Davis and Moffat years. That is because we need Doctor Who to be Doctor Who. We need Star Wars to be Star Wars. We need Star Trek to stop trying to be Star Wars and Battlestar Galactica and Game of Thrones. We need the good stuff. We need we need these franchises to remember what the crap they are. And Doctor Who, going back to that, would be a good thing. Do I trust it? We'll wait and see. I mean, I, I don't have the intimate knowledge of the Doctor Who behind the scenes writing and production and all of that stuff like I do with Star Trek. So I, I, I think for me, it's definitely a wait and see. 
for a start, they're going to be more returning villains. Good, good, good. Which when they returned the, they brought the Daleks back in the New Year special, which was such a, it was such a non-Dalek thing too. With his rusty, hastily constructed lone Dalek, the special felt like a rebirth. No, it didn't. It felt like a, a slapdash. Oh crap! We got to get some viewers for this, and we've skipped having a Christmas special, which was tradition. I mean. <laughs> This, this is why New Coke failed and they brought back cl Coke Classic. You, you go with tradition. Whether it's better or not is not for, for any of us to decide. Doctor Who is tradition, right? Like, especially if it's off the air for a very long amount of time or only in audiobooks. And I know there's the audiobooks out there. You guys are going to ask me to read them. I haven't read them or listened to, or listened to the audiobooks or anything. But no, like, when it came back with Christopher Eccleston as the doctor we got something that was much different and it was off the air for so long too you got to remember that it was off the air for a long time like a good decade because the last one I remember watching was the the special they aired in America with Eric Roberts as the master <laughs> and Paul McGann as the doctor and it wasn't that good it, it was all right it wasn't that good I mean the pinball table is better in my opinion but this <sighs> You, you kind of have to go with tradition on a lot of this or, or have a huge break where you don't do anything and then you bring it back as a rebirth, as something completely different. And that, in my opinion, was one of the things that really, really hurt Doctor Who, <laughs> was, was have, changing it so much in just, what, two years? Just two years. And yes, they're bringing back the Jadoon. I can't remember how to pronounce it, but those things and they're weird and blah, blah, blah. <sighs> And they're, yeah, they've been featuring minor roles, blah, blah, blah. Nobody cares. So tell me what you guys think. Do you think this is going to be a good thing? Do you think they're actually going to pull through with this? And yeah, I don't want to read the entire article because by the time you get to the very end, they're just, it's just advertising when and where you can watch it. And yeah. Thank you guys so much for watching. I, I don't know. I don't know if how much, how much is going to be fixed, but we'll see. We'll see. I mean, I, I, in my opinion, I don't believe this, that Doctor Who had nearly as bad of a season or, you know, reboot or whatever as, like, the last two seasons of Star Trek Discovery. But I think I have a lot more investment in Star Trek. I mean, I'm much more of a casual Who fan. I'm not, you know, as diehard as Star Trek. That being said, I've watched so much of it. See, you know, been to, been to Comic-Cons in the UK at Doctor Who panels. So, so yeah, or a panel. But, yeah, that, that's the thing, like... I still am a fan. I still am a fan. And there's different levels of fandom and anything. And But yeah, tell me what you guys think in the comment section below. I am MechaRandom42, PO Box 1566, Love in Colorado, 80539. I will be at Star Trek Las Vegas this year, hopefully, if I, oh, assuming everything goes well. And I will see you guys on the next video, live stream on Midnight's Edge After Dark, a creepy little book, or wherever you might find me. Bye! Thanks for watching! If you liked it, make sure to hit that like button, and if you want to see more, don't forget to subscribe! See you in the next video! Bye!